Hello, Earthlings! Welcome to a very special episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club. We're coming to you from Anomicon, a virtual conference on the Anomalous, put together by a friend of the show, Ryan Sprague. Shout out, Ryan Sprague. Somewhere in the skies. Hi, Ryan. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, We're so excited to have a little bit of a... um, esoteric conversation today right, for favorite. our uh, friends who are attending the show. Um, and if you're listening to this after the fact over on our podcast feed, because this will be a podcast episode, uh, you can actually watch this episode and all the other panels over at the Anomicon YouTube channel. And the video version of this will be dropping on our YouTube channel at Bigfoot Collectors Club on the Wednesday that this drops. Correct. So there you go. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can watch it a couple different ways on youtube right now so we'll include links to all of that stuff in the show notes however you are experiencing this welcome this is bigfoot collectors club the podcast where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness i'm your host michael mcmillan with me always is your other host hi i'm bryce jones <laughs> <laughs> did you see me eat that microphone <laughs> I'm Bryce Johnson. <laughs> I'm Bryce Johnson. Now it's one of our podcast episodes. <laughs> and uh, super producer. Riley Bray. Hey, guys. How's wow. it going? Good. I'm Microphone ex- awareness. Look, yeah, we had to go. break the, break the <laughs> yeah. nerves. This is our first time doing a video show <laughs> truly from the clubhouse since yes, we started. We should say this is the clubhouse. We are yeah. in the place. This is mm. where we actually sit and do the show. Yeah. So we're excited to actually invite people in for the first time. Mm-hmm. That is true. It's yeah, the first we're time inviting we've done it. you into the clubhouse. So you are now. Kind of like club members. Uh, and speaking of being in the clubhouse, Bryce, we have some special guests who are behind the scenes yeah, today. We do do you want to explain who is helping us out today? Oh, my God. It would be my honor. So uh, we've got some of the Expedition Bigfoot uh, crew here with we us. We got them here. We've brought them here. Uh, <laughs> we pulled so them out of the woods. <laughs> please welcome Josh and Kamalatin. Thank you for helping us with this, you guys. We love and appreciate you. They're so, just giving us quiet yeah. thumbs up from behind Those camera. Those great yeah. shots that you see on expedition bigfoot a lot of those come from these guys mm-hmm. so uh we're lucky to have them here you Great. guys have heard me rave about the expedition bigfoot cinematography for years now oh well yes awesome yeah. so now we're bringing that to the podcast i love it love it professional crossover ah <laughs> oh, yeah this is the part of the we show just gotta we whisper we gotta get the worlds te- collide <laughs> we gotta get the mic technique down and then we're we're good to go we're getting close um so when ryan sprague asked us to come do this i thought to myself i said what are we going to talk about you know because if this is it's a podcast episode but it's also a panel at mm-hmm. a convention about the anomalous and uh you know we do a segment on the show every week uh called bullshit or believe it mm-hmm. yep where we've talked to our guests and we go down a list of phenomenon. We say, okay, if you have to make a decision right now, yeah, are you open? Like, choose Bigfoot, a side. Bigfoot, bullshit, believe it, or believe it, believe it, believe it. Of believe course. It. So it really got me thinking about that old adage, you know, seeing is believing. Yeah, right. All right. And uh, all three of us have seen things that we can't explain. Uh, we've now had hundreds of guests on the show who yeah. have shared similar Some amazing stories. Guests. So many. Paranormal experts, celebrities, uh, just you name it. Experiencers. Yeah, experiencers. So it got me wondering, wh- is seeing believing? Like, is it really that simple so oh that's interesting when it comes to high strangeness you know what i mean just because mm-hmm. you see something does that mean you believe it because what, what about of, what about hearing is hearing believe well we're gonna get into that okay as i like to tell you on the show okay. all the time bryce don't get ahead it's of just too <laughs> hold your goddamn yeah. horses but i mean we've had we've had a guest on the show who have, who have saw yeah, who was a that? ghost it was ben blacker <laughs> saw a it. ghost and in his house and still house. didn't believe, and in, ghosts. Still didn't yeah. believe yeah. in ghosts so you bring up a great point that is gonna be the topic of this discussion and um 
believing. Yeah, we're going to talk about how belief shapes uh, our reality and how reality can shape belief systems, uh, how what we've seen has impacted how we look at the world. And then we're also going to talk to Bryce, uh, who's been seeing a lot of stuff lately, shooting the new season of Bigfoot, uh, Expedition Bigfoot, playing now on Discovery Channel. So let's dive in, boys. Here we are. Let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, so let's kick this off with an impossible question to answer. Um, Bryce and Riley. Mm Mm-hmm. How, what, what do you believe about reality? <laughs> Who wants to take that one? Riley, why don't you kick it off? You're a deep thinker. Yeah, exactly. yeah, man. What do you think about, what do you believe about what is reality? reality, Riley? Well, I mean, that is a, that's a big question. I told Michael, you. you really we're starting big. Starting broad. Yeah. And then we're going to. Yeah, we're going to find our way down. I mean, okay. So I think there, it's a twofold thing, right? Okay. So on the one hand. Reality is absolutely experienced and real and like, you know, if I, if you punch me, not that you would, but if you did, like, well, there's, there, well, you, you haven't might. pushed me, <laughs> we haven't you haven't that pushed me to the yet. edge yet, be a few more Give years, time. but like, I would experience that, you know, there's no like getting around that, right. like, there's the, the physicality of reality is undeniable, yes. right, but the experience of reality, I think is very different and very subjective, yes, and Especially because we're based on limited sensory data coming in, not 100% in real time with our brain processing. So you're living in this gap of, you know, light Huge and smells and things coming in and, and being processed. And, and then your, your self is saying, okay, this is reality. Mm-hmm. And so that to me is very permeable and has can change right depending on how your central nervous system is experiencing right the or, third dimension yeah or whatever or way. even down to like your mindset and your attitude and like there you go the way that you perceive reality is malleable and shifting you know yes. so what do i believe yeah. about reality i don't know i mean we also just might be in a computer so there's, True. there's also that and i can't say for certain that we're not now we should say that you were a philosophy major I, yeah. Right. Well, I was minor. Fi- I, I, Took a I, class. I was a double major. Fine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> fine art emphasis in installational sculpture. Okay, great. And comparative psychology. I was going to say it should. We should say for the record that like we're not really I got qualified the, to I have got, this conversation. Hey, we are, listen, <laughs> we're just just friends we hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Experts. Yeah. All, we you know we we when we started this podcast, it was just a deep interest in the paranormal and and that's what has driven this show for what we're going on seven years now. coming up on it yeah and and you know we've constantly been confronted with this idea of oh are we going to run out of strange topics to talk about or or is our belief system going to change and let me tell you something there is no end to the amount of strangeness that that we can talk about there are so many cryptids and encounter stories out there and our our belief, to your sort of point, uh, if seeing is believing, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but mine has changed yeah. over the years of doing this podcast. And Riley, I agree with you. I think reality is completely what we make of it. You know what I mean? And I mean that. I don't even know if you guys exist in a sense. Like, this could be all just part of my reality making machine. You know what I mean? Um, I, <laughs> I think when we're starting to look at- <laughs> There's like a narcissistic uh, hologram <laughs> no, yeah, joke yeah, in there yeah. somewhere, but we're gonna but leave it- I was sort of lie. touching off of that sort of holographic <laughs> idea or a simulation. You know, when we sort of look into the science of, of, of quantum mechanics and, and, you know, subatomic particles, we start to see that uh, what everything has in common down to the macro to the micro is space. Mm. You know what I mean? From mm. out there in the universe, space, down to this mug, what's mm. in here is, is just a collection of molecules held together by an enormity of space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, I think we don't know a lot about our reality. That's a good point. Yeah, I think what I believe about reality is the only thing I know I believe is that whatever it is, I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm here. There you go. That's sort of the first part of what I was saying. You're in my reality. Like, whatever it is, you are in it. (laughs) Whatever, we're (laughs) in it. We're all in Bryce's world. (laughs) We're all in Bryce's reality now. So what have you guys seen and I know we've talked a lot about this on the show. We don't have to necessarily go into our own personal yeah. por- paranormal histories, but like, have, what is you? What, what kind of stuff when it comes to this have you seen that has changed your reality? Well, I, I'd like to speak on this because I was thinking about this. So you know, for those of us who are, for those of you who aren't familiar 
with the show, you know, we started with Michael and I being common experiencers. You know, I saw this yellow eyed demon peering through my bedroom window Just when I was right like into four, yellow eyed demon, four or five. And, and Michael, a red saw devil, as you a red devil. It. Yeah. A red Cartoon devil. devil. And, you know, and Michael saw something in, in his window, too. And Riley's had an experience as well. But, you know, we've told these sort of encounters on this show podcast a few times now and the more i think about that story the more it becomes almost like a fictionalized memory to me mm -hmm. in a strange way i keep mm -hmm. looking back and i go you know i keep telling it the same way you know i i keep remembering it as truth my experience is seeing it believing i saw that right but now it's like i've told it so many times it's like sort of the the crispness of the details have gone away sure is that weird well, that's just also with time, right? Yeah, do Memory. you find that with you were your... a kid. I know, but like the more I tell the story now and think about it, and I'm like, I start to wonder if it ever really happened to me, you know? I mean, you're bringing up another really good point about reality, which is that so much of reality is memory mm. and so and memory really is these stories that you've retold and re it's built on you, you yeah memory is is story to internal storytelling you know mm. so the, <laughs> that's not real anymore right it, it it was at a point but your perception of it now is a is a construction you know totally and yeah. narratives are also a way that we construct belief in our own lives like the story that sure. we tell ourselves yeah about things that have happened to us about what we are what we're made of yes how we got here um, and I, you know, so I've seen what some would describe as a silhouette of an alien gray. Mm -hmm. I've also seen a ghost, yeah. which I'm like, that was a ghost. With that, another that, person who saw it at the same time. Yes. Yeah, so I was a teenager. We were, uh, I was at my school. There was a haunted building at that school. And I saw the ghost of a little girl that uh, was peering out at us. Now, I say the ghost of a little girl. I saw a pale white girl looking at us, hair braided into pigtails. My friend saw the same thing, pointed out details before I told her I was seeing the same details. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, I call it a ghost, but I don't know that it's a ghost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, but, I, but I did, after that point, I was like, okay, there is something other mm. there is something the thing that they call ghosts does exist yeah mm. so i believe in that yes and but i don't know what it is and and and, and furthermore the, the the real thing that changed for me when that happened that i have carried through up until the moment that we're recording this podcast is that when people say i saw something i tend to believe them because i'm like well so I have seen you. something too. So yeah. I can't, I, I know I can relate to you now. It's like being in a little club where like yeah. everyone else, I mean, so many people that we told that story to laughed at us because yeah. they thought we were making it up. Right. Well, and here's what I want to add to that. You know, whether seeing is believing or not, whether I did experience that sort of devilish uh, thing in my window or not, it changed my life mm -hmm. because it sent me on a journey that never ended and has led me here on this couch talking with you guys. Like, so whatever did happening, whatever did happen, whether I saw it or believed it at the time, it ultimately transformed my life in a major way. So something happened that night. So That's I mean, the anchor point where I leverage all this interest in the unknown too. So do you guys, do you, is it safe to say now, now Riley, I know that you And Riley just wants to deny that he was abducted by a UFO. <laughs> Tell him about the light that came into your room, Riley. Can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we just look at you, we know that aliens have like gotten in there somewhere. They're in there look, somewhere. You know, they like gave you the <laughs> cool you heard his music? <laughs> they were like, we, we gotta make this guy cool. I mean, I did wake up when I was a child to to the numbers on my digital clock being scrambled and then my room suddenly flooding with light. Okay. And then yeah. the then that light suddenly yeah. But also that was a long time ago and that same thing about the sort of the stories you tell yourself. Mm. So, you know, but I mean I I remember it. Yeah. It happened. So, but, do you guys think now would is it safe to say that you believe that there is something to that the the the, the Phen the phenomenon exists, whatever we, however we want to describe that. Ghosts, yes. aliens, Bigfoot, cryptids, whatever. Do you think? I know where you okay. stand. <laughs> I think. 100%. I think you find might surprise it. me. There is a phenomenon at play on this planet, and we are participating and engaging with it on a daily basis. Okay. That's about where you're at. Where are you at, Riley? The experience of the paranormal is inseparable from the human experience. That's where I'm at. Wow. Too. Yeah. 
I think it is just Old. whatever this is, it's part of the human condition. And that's also kind of brings me back to, well, whatever it is, I'm in that. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? So I believe yeah. that I, I don't know what it is, but we it interacts with us yeah. somehow. And it might all be in our brains and science will figure that out, but I, uh, who knows? Totally. There's a wild card within this reality. I no doubt so. about it. A okay. trickster element. So... Bryce. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about your Bryce. Yeah. Bryce. Let's talk about your work on Expedition Bigfoot. Yes. Season five is happening right now. Um, and by the time people see this, about half of the season will have aired. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. So wild. you're doing a lot more investigative work uh this season. Basically, Following in the footsteps of former castmate Ronnie LeBlanc, is that right? Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, whom we uh, miss very much. You know, uh, there was so much time between when we actually got our pickup uh, that when we asked Ronnie back, unfortunately, he had moved on to some other projects. But it gave me an amazing opportunity to I'm jump so, in there. Look. Get out of the command center like all you fans for. want me to. I will say Ronnie's irreplaceable, <laughs> but I'm so excited to see you. Next to Maria, Maria in, in Doctor Maria. Yes, in I call her Doc. All due respect, uh, in the hey, woods. I'm yeah. so happy to see you. Me too, man. Because you have to understand for people who don't may not know the show, like we've been all sitting on the the couches with each other for this long, and so I'm so excited to see you out in the woods. I know. I I, I am too. And, and let me <laughs> let me tell you something. Like I was like giddy. There's so much me like just holding energy back being out of the field like because i'm like i call it golden lab energy i just want to get out there and want to just start looking for bigfoot and uh it was so much fun and especially being coupled with with the good doctor like i like she is a legit uh field researcher and i just wanted to like learn as much as i could from her yeah what are can let's just jump into it like what things have you already picked up by just walking in her shadow through the woods oh just like um animal behavior like cool. and how it relates to the environment and like mm -hmm. and how it relates to looking for evidence so instead of just like meandering through the forest you're like okay there's clues everywhere how do we recognize them uh how do we look for evidence and uh sp speaking of i mean i'm probably jumping the gun which is what i do a lot on this show go but, for it but uh <clears throat> so as you may have noticed on that first episode i found uh my legit first footprint wow and yeah totally wow and uh so was that and seeing I, that did that make you believe no not yet <laughs> because and i want to unpack this because i think you guys will really love this so uh you know when i originally came across this footprint and this is a little bit of how the sausage is made you know we weren't rolling cameras i saw something and i was kind of like oh my gosh that looks like a big foot footprint i should take a picture of this i was almost like joking around right and so i took a picture of it and i go Oh, that's man. Oh, you can't really see how big it is. Let me put my hand down there. I should have these photos on my phone. And so I put my hand, I go, oh, that looks that looks pretty big. That looks pretty big. I go, I should probably show these to uh, Maria. And uh, and I go, Maria, look at this. And uh, and she's like, show me where that is, you know? And I'm like, great, it's on. So now we're rolling cameras and I'm taking her to where I found this footprint. And something really cool happened. So I'm like, okay what do you think, what do you see right there? And she's like, okay, well, as you see on the show, deep impression. And, and, and I'm like, yeah, I, I'm like, I see a toe here and a heel. And she's like, oh, I don't. Here's what I see. And you don't see this because, you know, we, we were talking about it in real time. She's like, I see it reverse. I think that's the heel and this is the toe. Cool. And as she starts to sort of like carefully move back some grass, I go, oh my gosh, you I saw see it too. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, it was, I, I, I saw it the other way. And she here she is pointing it out what it really could be. And now my head's kind of spinning. I'm going, is it, does it still look like a foot? I mean, like, what is this? Because it was deep impression, like maybe three, four inches in the ground. Mm. And I was sort of walking around the space and not making nearly as much impression. Mind you, it had all rained in that entire area for so long. Uh, so the ground was the ground still is really, really soft. soft and wet, you know? And I, it was just like... And now I'm looking for another print and I'm like, okay, well, if there's one, it's gotta be two. And what, here's what I love. And I'm, you know, so as Maria's like, okay, well, let's 3D scan this. Let's take, and then we'll do plaster cause we'll get a better look at it. And I go, okay, great, great. Now as this plaster's drying, I'm sort of in my mind 
imagining it, working it as. Do you a see the parade? No, going down <laughs> Willow Creek, we and the you're the no, no. yeah, you're holding up <laughs> no. Bigfoot no. next what, to you. You'll like, like this even more. What I'm doing is I'm sort of like visualizing it as a footprint. I'm sort of trying to manifest it as like a Bigfoot footprint because I know there's high strangeness involved. So and we'll get to that. You're saying you're actually tapping into like I'm trying to a little bit of. Magic, magic yes. to be like make it a footprint yes i'm trying to okay. because you know I, I i feel like i'm a magical person and i'm a very sort of mystical person so i like to incorporate that in to i want to bring some what i can to the field expedition and so uh, i want to bring you know that enthusiasm and also some magical workings and okay. you know and but anyway so in my mind i would imagine it like coming out like a footprint or what did it look like and i'll be darned as we get this plaster cast back, it looked like the footprint. I mean, I I almost couldn't believe that it looked like a footprint. Like what you had actually pictured. Yes. And and and, and, and almost I almost questioned myself, like, I can't believe like that actually came out like a foot. Like and the phenomenon then sort of like hooked me again. Mm. It was like, what is this? You know. That to me, when you're what you're describing, Riley, jump into mm-hmm. if uh, that kind of makes me think of like the cosmic trickster thing 100%. that we hear about that, uh, you know, we got passport to Magonia sitting right here on the, you know, like this idea of whatever this thing is also like the, the sense of humor that it has that like, you see it when you're not rolling. Right. Yeah. That you, you have it backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see it backwards mm-hmm. kind of fooling you guys. Yep. And then, um, so what do you, what do you make of that? What's, what's that relationship from between you and the phenomenon while you're out there trying to see it because as we know here's the thing yeah the phenomenon doesn't clearly doesn't like to be seen yeah, right right it doesn't like to be seen for too long or otherwise seen on its own terms or seen on its own terms that's a great great point right ufos they're typically gone in a second mm-hmm. bigfoot people see it gone in a flash yeah ghosts here one minute gone another get yep. it get yeah. what i'm saying totally so what do you make of that Okay. Like, let's get weird with it for totally. a second. Here's what I make of that. So when we say stuff like the phenomenon, um, you know, we sort of refer to everything strange that's happening in our world as the phenomenon. Yes, it's an umbrella term, uh, right? But we've found so many patterns and similarities in this strange stuff. Like, you know, Michael was pointing to this. Like, remember that red devil I was talking about in my window? Here's an alien gray using the devil as a mask. Want to hold that up maybe? Yeah. A little bit Here, higher? Here's the, here, we have cameras now. Yeah, we yeah. have cameras. <laughs> here's the alien gray using the devil as a mask. Here's the alien using uh, a gnome or a, an ogre or a, a goblin. Or, or a goblin as a mask. Here it is using a fairy from Celtic lore. So this book uh, by Jacques Vallée is seminal work because it points to the idea that the phenomenon uh, masks itself in different guises. Now, but I'm only laughing. I'm question, only laughing because we've held up this book to a Zoom camera probably five or six times on the show, well, and this is the first time we've actually had a camera here yeah. to look at it. An image is worth a thousand <laughs> like it's words. The first time. That conveys so much we about the phenomenon. It. We could finally do visual gags. Yes, but let me answer your question. So that footprint to me was. Who has pets? Do you know the end of a cat toy, the little like feather or a bell, mm-hmm. right? That's what it was. A phenomenon going, ding, 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 Like you're in the right area. You're doing the right things. Come look for me. Right. We're so engaging now. What about confirmation? Do you, did you feel like you get, and now, you know, I haven't, we've only, us sitting here in this moment have only seen yeah. episode one. Everyone watching this at home have seen the next few episodes. Did you get confirmation that this like, that's a foot? A hundred percent. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm convinced. I mean, yeah. once you look at the foot and then the plaster and then you start to put into context all of the activity and the experiences that took place after which, you know, I mean, look, I can't be a hundred percent sure that that's a foot because it was just one. If I wish I would have found a, another accompanying mm-hmm. step. It was just one single. Track. Just one yeah. single print. Now that weirder. may sound strange, <laughs> but, uh, That's part of this Bigfoot phenomenon. I mean, we've read reports where Bigfoot tracks will just completely end in the snow. Mm -hmm. And people are like, where are the rest of these tracks? Did it backtrack perfectly over its steps? Did a helicopter come and just take this thing off? Where are the rest of the tracks? Right? So is this? it's the same thing. One footprint or just tracks ending. Same thing. Uh, It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It almost makes me... I'm like, is it the forest doing it? Does the forest like... Could be. Sometimes you, you know what I mean. Like let's let's 
flip this on a totally different angle is like the forest literally playing tricks on people, like making you think there's a footprint there, making, you know, because we hear also like you guys have seen some weird stuff like orbs in the woods yeah. and these thermal it's images that theory. show up and then vanish. Yep. Um, so I, there is a part of me that's like, I know that people think that like Bigfoot could be some sort of forest elemental, but I'm like, what if it's like the woods is like consciously tricking people dude that shit's I mean, deep love that it's like, <laughs> you know? it's like the ends you know? yes yeah. yeah um i mean you know i'm like generally agnostic about all these things but I, I do love the idea of like a single bigfoot track being like it's just walking through dimensions and that's like the one Bonk. step in our dimension Ugh. and then the track the tracks just keep going as it's like skipping through <sighs> these layers of time and reality yeah you know i love that idea yeah i was pounding up and down trying to get that deep in the impression you know i didn't and what's really interesting is the grass was laid down really too like it's as if somebody took a heavy heavy placed boulder shaped like the bottom of a foot picked it up off that ground and then like mm. put it somewhere where i couldn't find it wow so what are some other things that you've seen filming the show or out in the woods because like you're doing the work now you're out there we're yeah. we're sitting at home making the podcast you're doing it what are, has there been another thing where you're like, I truly cannot believe what I'm looking at right now? You know, some of these things that you find in the woods, deep in the woods, should not be there. And so if, if you... Are you talking about... Structures. Yeah, okay. we're, we're going tree structures. Structures. Now. Okay. Yeah. Things left behind that 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 really are, are unnatural to the environment. And, and, and they're pretty, like, crazy, you know? When I... Thinking back to like that time, like I saw that thing cross the road, you know, that was the only other. That's in what season three? I <laughs> yeah, think. that was in Wash. That was in Washington, I believe. Uh, gosh, it all starts to bleed. Together. I believe it was in. Uh, it was in Northern California. And you had or mounted Washington. cameras on a car. You were driving down a dark road at night where people yeah. had seen these things crossing. Yeah, we did like Bigfoot this... were doing crossings. Yeah, I'm really I interested that. in all yeah. these like road crossings that people report, and so we just mounted the car with with infrared lights and infrared cameras, thermal cameras, and, you know, and I did some magical working that night too, you know, and, and I started to see, you know, and you're just driving around all night um, hoping for something, you know, and then I start to see this like little ball of red light, like dance across the, like play across the street. And I'm like, and I would turn the truck around I'm like, oh, I see something, let's follow that, you know? <laughs> so you're seeing a ball of light. Yeah, yeah, and then I see it again. So it's like, it's like, you're right, you're onto it now, you know, and as it gets closer, you see it get closer and then it disappears and then you're just like, it's just like, I think I drove by that thing like three or five, this is, I mean, probably 10 times, you know? And but, then uh, on, wasn't on the when the footage came back, didn't it look like something with two legs? Yeah, yeah. And then so you know, in my mind, I'm seeing like what looks like a ball of light, but sort of like cross the road, like you know. And you don't, yeah. And so it's like, what what am I seeing? Did you say it was red? Yeah, it came you, off like it came off like a like a it was emitting light. So you know? there are stories where people say that they see Bigfoot literally having glowing red eyes. Right. Do you think it's possible that maybe you were seeing like the glowing red it eyes? It could have been. Bigfoot? It was so far away. Like all I just know is there was a, a, a unnatural emanation of light source, and it wow. was red. So yeah, it could have been eyes, maybe. But I don't know, man. Sounds like Bigfoot eyes to me. It's what do like you like make of it? Like, what do you believe it to be? You know, I think there's a lot of uh, an anomalous phenomena that takes place in the woods. I loved your idea of like the woods being sort of conscious in itself, that immediately made me think of the crop circle phenomenon mm. and how it's sort of a voice for planet Earth. We still haven't got into crop circles yet, but... Uh, We've but yeah, yeah, you know, know. Controversial subject. Know. <laughs> All these years later. I mean, yeah. even these guys will attest, there's some strange stuff that takes place in the woods. We're getting lots of nods. <clears throat> you know, that... Uh, and I think this is what, what fans like... Uh, like about it and adhere to even even when you know dr Morea is confronted with the phenomenon you know which is what i love about science because you're like let me take in all the data and then make a, a hypothesis you know so um riley when we started the show mm -hmm. you what was your opinion on bigfoot like silly 70s lore yeah like, like stoner cabin bumper sticker kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff. Like I was like cool. I'd argue still can be <laughs> still the most fun part of Bigfoot for me is yeah. the like kitschiness of it. I definitely uh, yeah. never goes out of style. Yeah. Where are you at with it now? 
it's changed. I mean, it's definitely changed, especially especially with Bryce doing Expedition Bigfoot and watching that show and like and hearing so many stories of from people that are like seem like very reliable and like would have no real reason to make this stuff up. Why would you really want to? Right. Yeah. I mean, a small fraction of people maybe would, but not enough to account for what we actually hear and experience. So it it definitely leads me to conclude that people are experiencing something right you know like they're what that is i truly cannot say and like i like to take kind of like yeah like the scientific approach of like until it's provable and repeatable i'm never going to say i believe it because then that's just faith and it's not like science or proof but i mean there have been repeated repeated reliable encounters so Mm -hmm. it's really hard to say that but for me the the needle has moved you know yeah you made me also think of something that i'm sure bryce you deal with a lot and and you're um co-stars on the show which is there's another element to to this where you're seeing it in real life we're seeing it at home Mm. on a tv show right and there have to be people in fact i know there are that are watching the show and not believing anything that they're seeing they're 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 thinking it's all made up oh yeah right of course look there's gonna be haters there's always gonna be haters listen i've i've thought about this right like this story this bigfoot story has been taking place for thousands of years. Yeah. Who are we to come in and say, it's just a bear? <laughs> or, you know what? You just, you probably made it up. You know, you're hoaxing it. No. No. This story, this mythology has been with us as a human species for thousands of years, with yeah. every indigenous culture mm-hmm. on this planet, on every continent yeah on this planet it's not just something that took place in the 50s or the 70s and became a bumper sticker which i love and it brought it into our national consciousness but this is a deeper deeper phenomenon and for those who don't believe in it well then i just say go talk to somebody who's actually experienced it look them in the eye and say you're lying to me Wow. You call me a liar. Because I've spoken with these witnesses. Well, you've seen it for yourself, too, I've right? I've seen things and to experienced degree. things myself. I yeah. want to be a champion to the witness because this goes into what we're talking about. Terrence McKenna, psychonaut and just ethnobotanist supreme, said this. Experience is primacy. Experience is primacy. More than seeing. More than hearing. More than feeling. What's the experience of it? Mm-hmm. An experience of something is taking in all the data, sight, sound. Think about us as humans. We only see and hear such a tiny part of the visible and audible spectrum, maybe this much. The animal kingdom is like here. Mm-hmm. So there's so much information we're not taking in. Well, that that's so what my I was... experience of Bigfoot is real. Yeah. These people who are encountering these things in the woods, their experience of Bigfoot is real. Yeah, And there's nothing you can say to them, whether you believe them or not, that's going to make them change their mind. Well, and you're bringing up a point that you mentioned earlier, too. It's like, why are we so focused on seeing stuff? Why don't we think about hearing, feeling, you know, Mm. like the other senses? Yeah. You know, there's more there's more um, there's more connections in that gut biome than there almost are neural connections. That's why they call it our second brain. You know, what's your gut tell you? This is really where we should be making the majority of our decisions. Not from our head, not from our heart, but from our gut. My gut says it likes blueberry muffins. (laughs) So (laughs) what do you make of the stuff that you just cannot explain when you're looking for Bigfoot? Like, what do you make of that? How... What do you make of it? If you can't believe something... Yeah, totally. I'm comfortable... What use is it? I'm comfortable with paradox. And I'm comfortable with um, not knowing the answers. So when something is unexplainable to me, I'm comfortable leaving it there. You know what I mean? I don't need... the ans- I'm looking for answers, and that's what drives me and I'm sure the team. But, like, you know, I'm there for the quest, man. You know, I mean, like, if, if you told me I couldn't do this show unless I got definitive proof or the answers i would still do it i'm out there for the journey man you know it's like what would it take for both of you to believe in bigfoot like oh it exists and it's this Mm. it's a it's a hairy hominid walking around in the woods it wouldn't have to be a first-hand encounter for me because like 
I believe in Komodo dragons. Right. I, I've never seen one. <laughs> right. You've never been to the zoo, right? <laughs> <Riley? laughs> but yes. like, I know they're real, yep. you know? But it would take a level of proof beyond like a single photo or a track or a hair hair sample. But, I, but all of those things, and I think we, we've talked about this before on the show, it's like mm -hmm. triangulating evidence, you know, where it's like you have some physical evidence and you have a hair sample and you have a, a sighting and all those things start to come together to put a bigger picture together. But to fully believe it, I, it would need to be a pretty clear encounter. I think a damn good video would do it for like, me. Well mm. documented. That's I, on you guys. I, yes, I, 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 I disagree. No video, no photo, no encounter story will ever prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the existence of Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and and and. And, and here's so are why. you saying it's impossible to prove that Bigfoot exists? No, no, not at all, not at all. And, and I'm saying don't look for finale, don't look for a, a final conclusion on this because just like UFOs and hunting the alien, you know, do we have definitive proof on that? No, you know what I mean? Do we have a body on the lab table there? No, or do we? Not sure, right? <laughs> but okay, maybe. I know what you're asking. I know what you're Probably. asking. I mean, there's got to be proof out there. Is here's here's what I would say, right? Until we have and a body on a lab table, and even Dr. Maria Mayer would argue we don't need a body to classify new species right. in the animal kingdom. We don't need that. Hmm. For the general consensus of the public, we want that body. Are you going to get it? I don't think so because I think, like you said, Riley, I think this thing might be moving in and out of dimensions. I love it. Now, when you say, do I believe in Bigfoot? I believe in everything and I believe in nothing because I want to stay open. Here's the thing. John Keel, famous Fortean investigator, boots on the ground. OG granddaddy paranormal. We all give shout out to John Keel. He said, quote, belief is the enemy. Yeah. Belief is the enemy. I'm into that idea. So don't believe anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So is seeing believing then, do you guys think? No. No. I mean, I don't think, because seeing is like so many levels removed from reality already. You know, <laughs> it is a, it is a subjective experience. It, it's like, it's light on your retina as translated through your optic nerve as, uh, you know, interpreted by your brain to render a 3D environment that you're operating in. Like that's already so many steps removed from physical reality, you know? So no. Yeah. You know? How about you, Michael? Where are you on all this? I mean, I think for, on a personal level, if I saw a Bigfoot standing in the woods, I'd be like, okay, I believe in them now. Seriously. <laughs> they yeah. were right. Totally. They, were, they were right. They've been telling me this and now I'm looking at it and they're they're right, right? I mean, that is actually, that's what oh, I want. I, 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 I mean, a much more practical, answer. less <laughs> esoteric answer. You're like, well, yeah, that's actually, clearly. I mean, so for me, yes. That's exactly that's the answer. For me, yes. I, I mean, on a very, very simple level now, totally. but, but it might take that firsthand experience. Right. I, it might, you know, I might, walk you know i might disagree with riley a little bit you know I, I i think you make a very valid point that like i don't have to i know komodo dragons exist right mm -hmm. and i haven't i have i have seen one i have seen one but nobody's arguing about it exactly not anymore but but back then they sure were. They well were like, the, real. the the yeah. gorillas too i mean they're yeah. i mean come on yeah. they, they were right. it was we've only really Just recently discovered yeah i mean within you know 150 years. years or whatever so and we all know about the dinosaur bones that we talked about on the show as well. That was very fun. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, it would have to be seeing it. But I, I think there would be the same caveat that I've had with mm. the ghost encounter that I've had. And then whatever that alien gray situation was where I go, I'm seeing what people call Bigfoot. Right. But I don't know what it is. Yeah. That. Right? Yeah. Because it's just that also big, we're defining Bigfoot by from with our own terms. Yeah, here. Sure. what does Bigfoot call himself? Totally themselves. You know, I'll tell I you do what. Think there's more than one regular foot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just normal. You, normal foot size Michael, guy. You were absolutely right, man. When you're out in the woods, your head's on a swivel. You want to see it. For yeah, yourself. you kind of want to see it because you know what? That's the entry point, isn't it? It's our visuals. Mm. We eat with our eyes first. The funny thing you is, know, let's see this. The funny thing, thing is, if you got him or her. Or them on camera on the show, people still wouldn't believe it. They would think it was somebody in a costume or it was CGI we and you were faking it. Show. We've gotten daytime video, we've gotten nighttime got video. Got those thermal images. That I were mean, pretty compelling. Yeah. it's out there, man. I love it. It is leaving tracks and it is fucking playing cat and mouse. I love it. Great. I love it too. Anything else before we wrap this up? 
Uh, just thank you, Anomicon fans. Thank you, Ryan Sprague. Thank you to the sponsors, SpectreVision, Lionsgate, and all who else participated in this incredible event. Um, yeah. And yeah. to our gentlemen. And to uh, the Expedition Bigfoot cameramen, uh, Kamalton and Josh. Thank you to you guys. Thank, thank you, you to the fans, the listeners. Thank you to anybody who participates in in the mystery. That uh, Yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this. Putting up with us. Yeah, if you guys <laughs> want to check out more video content, uh, come by our YouTube channel, Epic Foot Collectors Club. Lots of stuff there. Um, mm-hmm. Lots of fun stuff over there. And you can find every episode of the podcast over there, on as, uh, over there as well. Mm-hmm. Or you can listen to Bigfoot Collectors. Collectors Club on your favorite podcast app every Wednesday. The show is free to download and listen to. However, if you like giving people with weird ideas money, you can come over to our Patreon, BCC, the other side at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. You're going to get instant access to over 260 episodes at this point. Yeah, Three bonus episodes every month. You can upgrade to get ad-free episodes of the regular show and over... 24 hours of music now that Riley has scored for yeah, the podcast from is the show. available. I mean, I you know what? I actually was um, working on the show the other day, and I now when I'm writing for the show, for the podcast, I play your music that to keep rules. me inspired. I yeah. love that. It's great. That's cool. meta. And also, if you just want to like meditate and chill yeah. to it, it's yeah. pretty Or like do the dishes. Yeah. Just some like wom wom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, that's all over at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Anomicon, for having us. Thank you for listening. Uh, we will be back next week on our podcast feed with an all new episode of BCC. Until then. Until then. Good night. It, good night. And it feels like we should all three go all right. get regressed. That's probably true. Yeah. That's I think we need it at this <laughs> we point. We need our heads exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, sure. that's a very special episode. Yeah. yeah. Group, we just group you guys regression. We just go group to regression. Hypnotist. <laughs> we just go. We just go to therapy. Yeah. At this point, we just need I therapy. Mean, thought we were, thought that's what this was. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Goodbye. Bigfoot Collectors Club is executive produced by Michael McMillan, Riley Bray, and Bryce Johnson. Our show is engineered, produced, and scored by Riley Bray. Our theme song, Come Alone, is by Sun Eaters. Follow them on Spotify. Want more BCC? For exclusive full-length episodes every month and total access to the other side, check out patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. 